Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Mark from Mixit Studios. Today I wanted to talk a bit about the Pro Tools control app and how I utilize that in my workflow. Hopefully give you some tips and ideas on how you might be able to integrate it into your setup. So the Pro Tools control app is a totally free app and you can download it for your iPad or Android tablet. I use mine with an iPad Gem 4, which by this point is quite an old tablet but it still works just fine. It doesn't run the very latest version, but it works fine on the version it runs on. If you own a tablet already, this is a great free option for stepping into the world of control surfaces, or if you have any kind of control surfaces already, it can integrate quite well into that setup. If you don't have a tablet already, there are loads of cheap options out there like the Amazon Fire tablets. They're pretty cheap these days and it should run just fine on a basic tablet like that. The iPad 4, I wouldn't go for any older gem than that, but the iPad Gem 4, you can find pretty cheap used secondhand, even slightly newer gen iPads, you can get fairly cheap secondhand. So if you want to buy a tablet just for this purpose, there are lots of relatively cheap options. So I use mine with an Icon QCon control surface setup. So I have one of the main QCon Pro units and then two of the EX extender units. And this gives me 24 channels of tactile fader control as well as all my general channel strip functions like panning, record arm, solo and mute and all my global transport control. And that's awesome to have all that general kind of control. The one thing to keep in mind with control surfaces is that you can do everything you can do with a control surface with a keyboard and mouse. A control surface doesn't do anything to make your mixes or your recordings sound better. It doesn't have any influence on the audio at all. So in that sense, you know, you can get around just fine with a mouse and a keyboard. And this is why I think the tablet app is great, particularly if you do already have a tablet you can use it on. It's a totally free option that's there for you to use that can give you some options just to speed things up a bit. And that's one of the main benefits of having a control surface. It can potentially speed up your workflow. There are lots of ways that actually it can slow you down and it's quicker to reach for a mouse or a keyboard. Um, and there's certainly a learning curve. It can take some time to get good and get quick on a control surface in the same way that you might be used to using your keyboard and mouse. So it's not necessarily going to be straight away a quicker option for you to use. But another thing to keep in mind is I think some people, they're quite happy with a, a minimal setup and just sat in front of a computer with some monitors and that's all they need. For some people, having a control surface set up or some kind of setup in front of them where they feel like they're sat in more of a workstation environment, it helps them to, I know for me, it makes me feel more creative and more productive. Having a nice workstation in front of me and having that hands-on tactile control. So there's definitely those kind of benefits, but at the same time, I do think it is important to not get too caught up in the idea of control surfaces because they do tend to be very expensive, particularly avid zone control surfaces. If you don't have that much money, if you're in a small home studio setup or you're just starting out with what you're doing, there are probably better areas that you can spend your money on. Particularly with Pro Tools, the Avid control surfaces, they use Avid's own proprietary control protocol, which is the Ucom protocol. And that's also what the Pro Tools control app uses. Avid being Avid, they're very much the Apple of the pro audio world and they like people to use their stuff in order to get the best experience, which means that for third party control surfaces, they are limited to control protocols like the Huey protocol that just aren't as well integrated into Pro Tools and the impl implementation feels a little bit half-baked. General functions with my QCon controllers work just fine. Fader control, automation, transport control, all that basic stuff works great, but there are a lot of limitations. Um, there are certain things. It has a dedicated master fader that will not work in Pro Tools. And this is just a limitation of the Huey protocol and the way that Pro Tools creates master faders in the software. So a master fader 
will be seen by the Huey protocol as just a general channel fader. So on my QCon controllers, it will come up on one of the channel faders rather than the dedicated master fader. So that fader is essentially redundant, which is a bit frustrating. There's also other stuff like my QCon extender units. Sends on faders will only work on the main unit and not the extenders. And the same goes for plug-in control as well. So there's limitations like that to keep in mind and to have to work around, which can be quite frustrating. And this is where the Pro Tools app again, because it does use the Yukon protocol, can be a nice complement to any other control surfaces that you might have. If you don't have a control surface already and you're using the app primarily as your control surface, the mixer page is really good. So if I create a new audio track here, You'll see on my mixer page, I've now got a channel fader and the fader control is great. It's definitely a lot less finicky, especially in terms of small adjustment than using a mouse um, for automation. It's really good as well. So it's an awesome option to have if you don't have any control surfaces already. And it's definitely gives you advantages over using a mouse for those kind of adjustments. Um, and it's definitely a lot quicker. You've got your tracks page as well, where this is really useful because if you have a busy session, you can see all of your tracks at a glance and you can select any channel to make it active, which is a really nice feature to have. Um, the main strength of the app for me is within the soft keys page. And this is, I pretty much use this page exclusively alongside my QCon controllers. Um, the soft keys basically is where you can create custom keys or there's a bunch that the app already has. There's literally pages and pages of these which are assigned to pretty much any function you could think of within Pro Tools. The main strength of these soft keys is when you have something that would normally take multiple actions with a mouse and keyboard to achieve that you can do really quickly with one touch of a soft key on the app. There's a load of already made soft keys for you, but there are also there are user pages that you can set up. So I have two pages with my own keys that I've made and certain functions. So I have a key set here for creating a new aux channel, a stereo aux channel. So if I hit that, it then automatically makes a new stereo aux channel for me, which saves me a load of steps because normally I would have to go control shift N, create a new track, select stereo, aux input, and then hit create. So you can see how it would save you a lot of time with certain actions like that. There are limitations, which I'll show you in a minute, but you can go pretty in depth with the amount of actions that you can trigger with one soft key. So if you get creative with this, I can see that there would be a lot that you could do with it. The other main function of the app, and this is where it is definitely lacking for me, is the channel section. The one limitation I've always found with any kind of control surface is plug-in control. When it comes to hardware control, if you're going to control plugins with hardware, the main issue is that there are hundreds and thousands of plugins out there. And if you're trying to map all the parameters of those thousands of different plugins to one set of hardware controls, there's not really any like one size fits all solution that is going to work really well for everything that you're going to use. And this is the case on my Icon QCon units where the plugin imp implementation just isn't very good. Um, it works across the channel strip screen where you'll see all the parameters for your plugins and then you adjust them with your rotaries. But the way it lays it out, it's often quite cluttered, quite clunky to use and it's quicker even just in terms of loading up a plugin it's quicker just to reach for the mouse and do it on screen in Pro Tools and I find this is the same issue within the Pro Tools control app where unfortunately it, it just maps plugin controls to a generic layout which works okay for some plugins but then doesn't work that well for others and there's also issues with some plugins, like certain parameters just will not be there at all, or 
they just won't work very well. You'll see in a second when I show you. So there are definitely issues with it. I think for me, the real way forward with that kind of control surface stuff is with touchscreen control. So options that we're starting to see, like the Slate Raven, I think really are the way forward because a touchscreen can change the layout corresponding to whatever GUI of whatever plugin or whatever you're trying to control, it can change its layout. And I think you really need that for that kind of control to work well. Um, so I'll show you on the Pro Tools app here. If I go on, so I, I'll select my first audio track, say I want to put a plugin on there, and then I select inserts, and you'll see it's got all my lettered insert slots here and then anything where there you've got to bank anything it will have these slots in the the middle which this is a bit of a i don't really like this layout i find it a little bit clunky but yeah you can bank between anything where there are going to be banks of options uh, you can do that in the middle there straight away it's not very obvious how you're actually meant to insert a plugin if i select a plugin insert slot it doesn't do anything. So I actually have to hit config to load a plugin up. So then if I hit my insert, then it then brings up the option to load a plugin. And I'll show you, so if I bring up, if I go on dynamics and I bring up waves R comp, and then I have to go out of config and then select the R comp straight away, I think that already takes way too many steps compared to doing it with a mouse, so already it's not as good. Um, but for a plugin like this, the control mapping isn't too bad because something like a compressor is not going to have that many parameters, so it maps a bit better to this layout, and also the fact that R comp, most of the controls are on sliders, which all of the controls on this mapping in the Pro Tools control app is all by sliders so it correlates quite well between the two for these toggle buttons you have here they also become sliders on the pro tools control app and the other weird thing is that so for any dynamics or eq plugin you have these dedicated dynamics and eq pages where you can also access those plugins almost like a channel strip kind of layout you can access those there so if I go to my Waves R comp via the Dynamics tab, it brings up that mapping, but for some reason the mapping is different and it's actually missing all the um, toggle buttons of the plugin. So straight away, it just makes that Dynamics section redundant for this plugin. And you'll find that that's the case with a lot of plugins you'll load up. I've found with certain EQ plugins, stuff like the Q curves will just be missing which just makes it redundant to be able to control it via the control app. You know, slider control for EQ controls, I would really like to see something more akin to the GUI that you would see for an EQ plugin. So if you imagine this was on a touchscreen and I was doing this with my finger, I would like to see some... I think you could have a generic mapping layout for EQ plugins on the app like this. I don't... You know, I think they could do better even without being able to display the plugin GUIs on screen on the app. I think you could have different mapping controls dependent on whether it's an EQ plugin, a compressor plugin, or an effects plugin, and so on. So for me, I don't think the channel strip stuff is that useful. Your mileage may vary. You might find that this works just fine for you but for me i just find it's not very intuitive and i prefer doing stuff via a mouse so i've yet to find anything that really works for me in terms of plug-in control but uh, the soft keys i think is a fantastic function and it really works really nicely alongside my icon qcon controllers the one thing that i don't like about the soft key function is how you actually program those in so you do that all by the eu control software that you have to install on your computer so if i go to control touchscreen and then i'm on page 135 now 
So I select that and that's bringing up the keys that I have up on my iPad. Um, and so you can select any of these soft key slots and then set the command that you want that soft key to trigger. So if I go to an empty page or well, I've got some em empty slots here. So if I select an empty slot here and then go command, I can add, I can either add keyboard shortcuts or I can add Yukon commands. Um, I can add a bunch of different types of commands, but you can't mix and match commands. So you can't assign a soft key with a mix of keyboard shortcuts and Yukon shortcuts, which is really annoying because it does mean that there are some, there isn't a keyboard shortcut for every function in Pro Tools. And there are some Yukon functions that would do stuff that you couldn't do with keyboard shortcuts. There are ways that you could combine the two to offer more options for what you could assign to a soft key, but it just doesn't let you do that, which is pretty annoying. Or it does let you do that, but it will just bug out and those soft keys won't work properly. So that is also something that it doesn't even tell you that you can't do that anywhere. So I had to figure that out for myself, which is quite frustrating. The other major issue, which I think is a huge oversight, and I don't know if it's something that they've improved in newer versions, but there is no way to, you can't drag and drop soft keys. You can't um, cut and paste them. So you literally have to delete a soft key and then reprogram it if you decide you want to move something, which especially if you have a soft key where you've got a, a whole long string of commands, you have to set those all up again, which is very tedious and time consuming. And the thing I find with something like this is that when I first set my two user pages that I've got up, um, I was kind of doing it as I was working on projects and adding stuff in as, as I was working on something and I, I would think, oh, you know, it'd be good to have a soft key for that function. And so I would set it up and I was trying to lay it out in a way that was intuitive. So between my two pages, I have one page, which is more, uh, mix focus when I'm mixing and then one that is more for editing stuff. But you find that in practice, as you're using this stuff, over time, you realize that another layout would work better. And actually, you know, that one key that you set would work better on another page and you want to start moving stuff around, but there's no easy way of doing that, which is really frustrating. Um, but other than that, I really, really like the soft keys function and I think it's super useful. So that is how I utilize it in my setup. So hopefully this has given you guys some ideas of how you might be able to utilize the app in your workflow. And I think it's a great option if you don't have a control surface already, or if you do, there are lots of ways that you can combine the two to complement each other nicely. Hopefully uh, me rambling on about this has just given you some food for thought and some ideas on what might work for you, particularly if you are just delving into the world of control surfaces. So I hope this has been useful for you and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon.